What's up road trippers, ballpark explorers, and baseball fans? My name's Nick Carey, and welcome to the American Ballpark Road Trip, where we showcase baseball teams, their home ballparks, and their surrounding communities. If you're fishing for a great time in a great town at an amazing ballpark, look no further than where we're visiting today, Pool Ray Field in Gwinnett County, Georgia, in nearby Lawrenceville, home of the Gwinnett Stripers, the AAA International League affiliate of the Atlanta Braves. So grab your favorite ballpark brew, sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip. Gwinnett County is home to more than 967,000 residents, more than 30,000 of which live in Lawrenceville, the county seat and city nearest to the home of the Gwinnett Stripers. Gwinnett County is part of the Atlanta metropolitan area and the second most populous county in the state of Georgia. For most of its history before becoming a suburb of Atlanta, Lawrenceville was a rural community prospering in cotton, livestock, and lumber industries, in addition to being a railroad hub. In this episode, we're exploring downtown Lawrenceville and its bustling main thoroughfare on East Krogan Street in the area surrounding the historic Courthouse Square. This area features everything a visitor could want, from local eateries with sidewalk-style cafe dining, to unique shops and stores, to unique arts experiences for all ages. Gwinnett County was formally established in 1818 and got its first courthouse in a log cabin structure in 1819. Five years later in 1824, it got its first brick and mortar courthouse, but that one only stuck around until 1871 when it was burnt to the ground in arson by a bootlegger trying to destroy trial evidence against him. Well, thankfully that trial evidence was recovered and he was put away for it, but a new courthouse was built only for it to be torn down two years later. In 1885, the Romanesque style courthouse you see here was completed on the foundation of that original courthouse that burnt down. So some charring and some burn residue is still visible in the basement of this building. The balcony and belfry were added in 1908, just around the time that the Lawrenceville community embraced this courthouse square as a popular gathering place and have since. Additions were added in the 1930s and 1960s, the 1930s one with help of the WPA, and that made this courthouse what it is today, a popular gathering place and staple of this community for true courthouse weddings and other community events. The surrounding monuments and courthouse square make a great way to spend your afternoon before a Stripers game. The county was named in honor of Butt and Gwinnett, one of the three signatories of the Declaration of Independence representing Georgia. In fact, one of the final names considered before the team became the Gwinnett Stripers was the Gwinnett Buttons. The earliest residents of Lawrenceville must have known something was in the water here when they built the original courthouse so close to the natural springs. Why? This area has been home or birthplace to a number of professional and high-level athletes over the years. They include former Atlanta Braves, Brian McCann and Jeff Francoeur, at least three NFL players, current MLS player and Team USA member Walker Zimmerman, and the heavyweight champion who would be known as the Cincinnati Cyclone, Ezard Charles, who was born here in 1921. The Lawrenceville Art Center opened in October of 2021 as a result of a historic continued partnership between Aurora Theater and the City of Lawrenceville. This $35 million, 59,500 square foot Center for the Arts has five venues hosting performances of all kinds, both indoor and outdoor. And those performances range from traveling Broadway productions, local productions, stand-up comedies, concerts, dance recitals, and community events. Even local ghost tours that capture the stories of the Courthouse Square launch from here each fall. Aurora Theater is the resident company and operator of the Lawrenceville Arts Center. 
and their humble beginnings began in a converted hardware store in 1996 before partnering with the city of Lawrenceville for the first time in 2007 to move into a 100-year-old church just down the block from the art center now. That partnership between the city and Aurora Theater continued throughout the 2020 pandemic as construction work and fundraising persisted to ensure that this center was open on time in 2021. So when you're in town for a Stripers game, look up the Lawrenceville Art Center and see what Aurora Theater has on stage. Gwinnett County is home to over 40 public parks, including three in or around Lawrenceville alone. Not to mention the ever popular Lake Lanier, a man-made reservoir lake constructed by the Army Corps of Engineers in 1956. Residents and visitors alike are welcome to these parks and Lake Lanier to appreciate both the natural beauty and natural resources of Gwinnett County. One of those natural resources, the largemouth striped bass that gives the Gwinnett Stripers their name, to which they rebranded to in 2017 after spending the first years of their franchise history as the Gwinnett Braves. Today we're visiting Rhodes Jordan Park, not too far from downtown Lawrenceville. This 162 acre park has something for anyone and everyone, from athletic fields for just about any sport, park pavilions, a playground, an aquatic center, a community center, a senior center, this 1.9 mile paved trail, and this fishing lake. But if you're looking to cast around and angling for a good time before you go to a stripers game, just be sure to buy a Georgia fishing permit. Strange Taco Bar opened its doors in May 2020 and was created by the ownership of another favorite local eatery, Local Republic, in that restaurant's former location. With the name and decor inspired by the film Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, this fast casual taqueria with indoor and outdoor seating is just as memorable and hits the spot with a variety of handheld, made from scratch eats plus cool drinks to match. Liberty Books sits at the corner of East Krogan and South Clayton Streets just across from the Gwinnett Historic Courthouse Square. The store has called Lawrenceville home since 1996 when it was established as Books for Less by Jack Mason. It continues to serve the Gwinnett County community as a Christian-based general content bookseller with more than 50,000 titles in stock at a variety of discounts in a warm and welcoming setting. They even have a well-stocked sports section with plenty of books on baseball, ballpark travel, and ballparks themselves. Ground was broken for Coolray Field in June 2008 on a 44-acre site that was previously undeveloped forest and farmland. The building of the ballpark was financed and it is maintained by Gwinnett County. Coolray Field, as it would be known, hosted its first game on April 17, 2009. Appreciate it. Thank you. We finally made it into Cool Ray Field. We found our guest for this episode. I'm with uh, Patrick Larson. Um, I have a series on Twitter called the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And uh, welcome to Cool Ray Field and really happy to have the American Ballpark Road Trip here with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. So you're local to the, the area relatively. Yes, um, I'm about um, about 30 minutes uh, north, um, just up in Oakwood, Georgia. Okay. So, so in Hall County, which is a neighboring county to Gwinnett. And so um, it's, my, it's my local minor league team and I just love coming yeah. out to the ballpark. Yeah. And, and seeing, seeing minor league baseball.
The Gwinnett Braves played their first season in Gwinnett County in 2009 after the Atlanta Braves relocated their AAA International League franchise from Richmond, Virginia. This move gave Gwinnett and the Braves one of the shortest distances, just 35 miles, between a major and minor league affiliate in baseball, along with St. Paul and the Minnesota Twins and Tacoma and the Seattle Mariners. The then Gwinnett Braves moved into the ballpark, later to be renamed Cool Ray Field. With AAA teams just one step away from the majors, there's even a chance of seeing a familiar name or two on the rosters of visiting International League opponents like the Durham Bulls. This is a beautiful venue, beautiful ballpark. How long have you been coming out here? Um, I've probably been coming out here about 12 years. Um, ever since ever since they were the Gwinnett Braves and then they switched, of course, to the Gwinnett Stripers. Um, it's been a really, really fun experience and um, I've really appreciated it more in recent years, particularly after the COVID, after the COVID pandemic. And when I really knew I wanted to come back out, that's, of course, when the um, when, when, when COVID hit and then we had the canceled season of 2020. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed coming back out and I have a really renewed appreciation for having minor league baseball so close. It's such a jewel to me yeah. to have it so close in my neighborhood. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think we all feel the same way. The, this episode started in Puerto Rico and we were, we were just wondering if we could get in the ballpark sometimes. So. Right. So this is an extremely unique brand. There aren't very many, I would say, aquatic-based names in minor league baseball. Exactly. And they have, at least from my knowledge, plenty in their brand identity. You specialize in showing the history of minor league baseball teams through their ball caps. What's your favorite one for the Stripers? You know, that's a really good question, but and that's a really hard one to choose <laughs> as well. But I probably got to go with the classic Striper home hat. Uh, with, with the uh, and for those that don't know, it's the it's the one with the fish that just with just with just the striper. Uh, for, and for those that don't know, that's just for a striped bass. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the logo was created by Grandiose, and um, it's uh, it's a classic home hat in an all navy colorway with just the with just the striper fish on it, and uh, it's one that you'll see them wear most often. Yeah. But um, uh, a very close second would be the would be like the the road hat. It has a yeah. G that kind of acts as a fish hook yeah. with the with the striper fish coming up to get the bait. <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, as Brandios always does, they've got a great yeah. uh, logo suite, and they've got um, they, they've got a lot to choose from. They've got something for everybody, from adults to to, to yeah. small children as well. All right, ballpark fans, time for the merch feature of the game, and. It is probably the smallest item you can find in a team store, but the Gwinnett Stripers integrate their logo into a physical piece of merchandise in this fishing hook made for your hat with a baseball on it, just like the Stripers logo. So, picked up one of these. Now I'll go ahead and add it, if I can, to my very own hat here. So, that is our merch feature for the game. Look on the Stripers website and get one of these ordered today. In 2017, the team held a Name the Team contest seeking a new brand identity with the Big Mouths, as in Large Mouth Bass, taking top honors among the field including the Hush Puppies, Lamb Chops, Sweet Teas, and the aforementioned Buttons. In the name of good sportsmanship and a brand identity with a more positive connotation, Big Mouse was swapped out for stripers, and their traditional red, white, and navy blue of Atlanta was exchanged for dark blue, sea green, and red. So, 
It's a really, really fun brand. This looks like a really fun ballpark. Um, it, it looks like one of those great ballparks that if you want to go to a ball game on a Tuesday night, you're going to have a good time. If you come on a Saturday, it's going to be even better. So what keeps you coming back to the ballpark outside of that renewed interest, that renewed love for the game? Honestly, the friendly staff. Uh, okay. Like because as, as as anyone that's seen my hat history series would know, I have a lot of hats. So I get I, I know people in the merch store yeah. quite a bit. So Malik that, that works in the that's the merchandise manager does a fantastic job. Um, Aaron McCormick under her leadership is a female GM, and that's something I think that is yeah. it, it kind of sets them apart. She's I believe in her second full season as a, as GM. She was named GM in October 2021. Okay. So she does a great job under her leadership, le leading this entire staff that really. They really put the fans first, in my opinion, and they do a great job of uh, welcoming everybody to the park. And um, as you know from from your career of working in, a, you know, being a GM yourself, I believe yeah. at, at one time. Um, all the togetherness that it takes to really oh, yeah. bring everyone together, and um, ev everyone does a, does a hundred jobs. Uh, whether it's pulling the tarp to, like yeah. in Marin's case, overseeing everybody. Whether it's merch, whether it's promotions, whether it's ticket sales. I mean, yeah. everyone just kind of comes together to, you know make sure that the fans have a great experience so I think it's that and knowing that they put the fans first at least in my opinion and um, I'm gonna keep coming back yeah. The late, great knuckleballing Hall of Famer Phil Necro was a frequent visitor of Cool Ray Field. He was even there when they unveiled the Stripers brand. So a t-shirt giveaway with his image during our visit was one of the many ways Gwinnett has honored the legend. If you get thirsty at the ballpark, don't strike out by not trying 643 Pilsner, the product of a historic collaboration between the Stripers and Pontoon Brewing. Available both in park and throughout the state of Georgia, the cans of this special beer feature Striper-themed art and numbers significant in the team's history. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. You've been a wonderful guest. Obviously, everybody needs to check out the at History series that Patrick does as part of the Curve Brim Media Network. And uh, check that out. We're going to take in the ballpark amenities and show you a little bit of Cool Ray Field. Pat, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. And keep watching this great show. It's uh, It's been great so far. And I'm I, just kudos to you and the team for, for, for showing showing all these different communities and these different ballparks. So yeah. Thank you for allowing me the honor of being on your program. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, let's show off the ballpark a little bit. Sounds good. Cool Ray Field has eight different concessions locations. Themed ballpark treats include the Nuxi, known as Phil Negro's favorite, of pulled pork and a number of fixings over skillet cornbread at Pontoon Brewing Boathouse. Or try the barbecue sundae bowl from the All the Fixin' stands, walking tacos from Zolo's Cantina and Peach Cobbler Sundays in Souvenir Helmet at the Sweet Spot, plus their standard ballpark fare too. Ballpark capacity at Cool Ray Field is 10,427 fans. Its largest crowd ever was hosted in April 2012 with an exhibition matchup between the Braves All-Stars, which was most of their opening day lineup that year, 
and the Braves Future Stars team. Former Atlanta manager Bobby Cox managed the Braves Future Stars, including names like Mike Miner, Evan Gaddis, and Tommy Listella. If you aren't fortunate enough to live with a view overlooking the ballpark, there are plenty of options as to where to sit. Whether you take in the game from a box seat, on a blanket on one of the expansive berm areas in the outfield known as the bank, sitting in style in the Cutwater Club, or with seats near either team's dugouts, or maybe one of the ballpark's 19 luxury suites. With the Braves' farm system usually flush with young talent ready to burst onto the scene, it's likely those homegrown stars have played on the diamond at Coolray Field before moving up to the majors. Freddie Freeman, Julio Tehran, Mike Miner, Mike Soroka, Jojo Reyes, Jason Hayward, Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley, and many more have spent time in Gwinnett County since 2009. Even Braves manager Brian Snitker managed the Gwinnett Ball Club from 2014 until his elevation to Atlanta in 2016. Thanks for joining us on this episode of American Ballpark Road Trip here from Cool Ray Field, home of the Gwinnett Stripers. And there's nothing fishy about the great time you'll have here in Gwinnett County visiting the Stripers and Lawrenceville. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a like, follow us on our channel American Ballpark Road Trip, and share this episode with your fellow baseball fans and ballpark travelers alike. Don't forget to follow us on our socials and look out for future ballpark content from American Ballpark Road Trip. Thanks again for watching fans, and we'll see you on the road.